The St. John of Damascus Orthodox Educational Initiative presents the Damascene Podcast. Hello everybody, this is Father John Summers, the headmaster of the St. John of Damascus Educational Initiative, with a special Lenten message from His Eminence Metropolitan Demetrius um, on education and on Orthodox, uh, on the, on Orthodox parenting and our youth in general. I ask everybody to listen, to seriously consider what the Metropolitan is saying. Um, I certainly uh, am, and to try to implement what he's he's directing us to do in our everyday lives. Here's Metropolitan Demetrius. Beloved children of the Lord, Great Lent, the season of repentance, has arrived, and I would like to take this opportunity to address you with some thoughts that I hope you take to heart. In the Old Testament reading of this past Wednesday, we read the following. Now therefore, said the Lord your God, turn to me with your whole heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with lamentation, and rend your hearts, and not your garments, and turn to the Lord your God. As we come to the beginning of Great Lent, as always, we have to recall with great earnestness what it means to be an Orthodox Christian. We have to recall how we came to the labor of the font, and having been anointed with the holy oil and gone down into the font and come out of it, how we committed ourselves to a life of unseen warfare against the devil. The priest asked us, Dost thou renounce Satan and all his works and all his angels and all his service and all his pride? And we answered, I renounce them. Having renounced Satan thrice, the priest asked us, Dost thou unite thyself unto Christ? And we answered, I unite myself. We must therefore take great care to fulfill these sacred promises. And as our Savior says, He who is faithful in little is faithful in much. And the fathers of the church emphasize, It is of great importance that we continually examine ourselves going from glory to glory and strength to strength. With this in mind, we would like to admonish the flock of several needs, several things to consider unto the strengthening of our families and unto the support, nourishment, and development of the youth of our church. First and foremost, we have to emphasize the great need for family prayer. Education does not begin in the study, in the classroom, nor does it begin in the library. Education begins with the prayer that we offer to God, both at home and at church, both individually and as a family as a body, as the body of Christ. Thus it is of great necessity that our families come to prayer together before the holy icons at least once, if not twice a day, morning and evening. It isn't necessary that the prayer be long, but it is necessary that the prayer be consistent and that the prayer be together. It is necessary that we strive to pay attention to the words of the prayer, putting away from ourselves every distraction we can and giving our hearts to God not just individually, but together as a family, for in the family, in the home, we are to behold a little church, and the children must see this. They must experience this. The children must see that the parents are undergoing their own interior struggle, not being perfect, but being committed to the warfare with the devil being committed to unite themselves unto Christ. Related to this is the issue, or rather the need, for vigilance to put away every distraction. We must make the flock aware, then, of the great necessity to deal with the problem of smartphones and of the digital lifestyle in general. Now, when we say this, we do not mean that the smartphone or the internet or any of these devices we have are evil in and of themselves. Indeed, we are using these devices right now to get this message to you. However, what we are saying is, as with everything in our lives, we must take care to spend the time of our life in a God-pleasing manner, to not allow our thoughts to go this way and that to focus on living the life in Christ. And so, we would like to ask parents, the parents first, to not give themselves to technological distractions as much as we may have been tempted to previously. Be a model for your children. Yes, these devices are sometimes necessary, or maybe even frequently necessary for work, but when work is done, when study is done, put them aside. Spend time with your children. Spend time doing spiritual reading. Spend time discussing the faith with fellow Orthodox Christians. And again, all this is for the parents first, because if the children do not see their parents seeking to pray, seeking to put away every distraction, seeking to study the words of the faith, seeking to practice their faith, the children will not think about it seriously and will not do it themselves. As parents, as fathers and mothers, as spiritual fathers, all of us will give account on the dread day of judgment for how we have taught our children. So let's ask ourselves, are we forming our children as children of the evil one or as children of our Lord Jesus Christ? So we ask you to be honest with yourselves in this season of Lent, and indeed throughout the year, to take a more discerning and more purposeful approach to these devices, knowing that through these devices a great many distractions 
and a great many evils come into our lives. There is a third point that needs to be stressed, and as we know, the time of the fast is a time of increased spiritual warfare. Indeed, the fathers of the church referred to the fast as the stadium of the virtues. So, as we enter the great fast, we want to ask the flock to begin to reflect more seriously about the threat of the anti-Christian, anti-human agenda being pursued both in our public schools and in the media. Now, when we say this, we do not mean to suggest that everyone ought to commit themselves to homeschooling. The decision to school your children at home is a very difficult one and presents many pastoral problems. Yet, we are asking people to think more seriously and honestly about the problems in the schools. We can see quite clearly that there is a persistent agenda to coerce, indeed to brainwash our children to support every kind of immorality that we have encountered as being good things. A very good example of this, both in Canada and the United States, is the attempt to force students and teachers alike to use pronouns that do not actually go with the person's biological sex. Here we have to recall the words of our Savior in the Gospel when he said that we will give an account for every idle word we speak. We must also recall the words of Isaiah when he says, Woe unto those who call good evil and evil good. Our children must not be taught to be indifferent to these things. They must be taught to bear witness to the truth, to bear witness to our Lord Jesus Christ in everything they do. Of course, that means that our parents, our bishops, our priests, our deacons, indeed everyone in our church, must be seeking to be examples of this behavior, being an example of steadfast confession of our Lord Jesus Christ of the truth itself. And so, we would like to ask you to begin to look more seriously at what is happening in the schools and to talk about it with your children. We need to teach the young not to give way to this evil, not to enable evil, not to say something that is not true, because as we have said already, quoting our Savior, He who is faithful in little is faithful in much. We hope and pray that putting all these things before you, you will not be confronted with anxiety or despair, but be roused to a godly courage approaching this season of Lent as a time of increased introspection, of prayer, of vigilance, and of confession of the Orthodox faith. And so we also hope that if you have questions, you will reach out to us asking for clarification about what has been said, because we, your clergy, hope to not only admonish you, but to invite you to a conversation as to how Orthodox Christians ought to respond to the anti-Christian, anti-human agenda that besets our youth. Indeed, this is our responsibility. There is one final thing we would like to say. The youth is the treasure of our church. The youth is the future of our church. Let us then, beloved brethren, stand up for them. Let us look to reaffirm our commitment to the Orthodox faith in prayer, in fasting, in introspection, in vigilance, and in confession, so that embracing it in such a manner we may inspire them to a life of godly courage and heroic virtue. We owe it to them. Amen.